right from the very word go, the fact that we have essentially negotiated a trade deal with Australia within less than, what, less than a year? First of all, should be ringing huge, huge alarm bells. Because normally, normally trade deals on average take about seven to ten years to actually negotiate. Because these are highly technical, very specific areas that they negotiate. Everything goes down to like the last minute detail. So the fact that we have dis like managed to do such a trade deal so fast shouldn't be something praiseworthy because again we haven't actually seen what's in the deal all we know is that there is going to be zero percent tariffs on uh, agricultural products that will be reduced to zero over the next 15 years which will absolutely destroy farming we also have heard the rumors that there are going to be um secret uh, basically uh you know courts which will allow companies to take our government to uh, task over regulations that we make and laws so so much for all that sovereignty argument that brexit has made um so this is by no mean by no means way of of being celebrated this should be brought on with so much scrutiny and suspicion because there is no way that this deal has not been negotiated by us but has been far more dictated to us by the australians because as we discussed just a few weeks ago with the whole liz truss calling um her counterpart um a schoolboy and not at her level when if anything her Australian counterpart was far more experienced than Liz Truss ever, ever was. He's got more experience in his tiny finger than Liz Truss has. But that's the situation we are talking about today. Liz Truss and her, her, her profile, because she is putting herself into a very, very bad situation. So, before we jump into today's article, please do remember to hit that like, share, and subscribe button. And of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page, as well as one-off donation link called Buy Me Coffee, where you can, well, buy me coffee. And as always, thank you very much to all those people who do support me. So, on to today's article. And this comes from the New European. And the title is, Liz Truss, The Dealmaker in Difficulty. So, Liz Truss is the greatest, is the great cabinet survivor and the darling currently of the Tory members. But will her controversial trade deal with Australia curb her ascent? Perhaps it's a measure of misogyny, of misogyny in the Parliament lobby that Boris Johnson's main acknowledged successors are Rishi Sunak, Dominic Raab and Michael Gove. The choice of who replaces him as Prime Minister will almost certainly be be a matter for, however, for Tory members. And when the Conservative Home website recently asked how satisfied they were about the individuals sitting around the Cabinet table, their clear favour with an absolutely empathetic 87% of the vote just happened to be a woman, Liz Truss. Sunak was the runner-up with 79% and Rab came in third on 70%. And awkwardly, the incumbent Prime Minister trailed well behind in 19th place with only 33%. As for Gove, he was only at 14th place with a 43% approval rating. So, just what are the high-profile Trade Secretary's prospects? Is it time to buy shares in Truss? A year ago, I wouldn't have put even a half penny on Liz Truss's chance of succeeding Boris. When Labour was screaming for her resignation after she allowed military supplies to be illegally shipped to Saudi Arabia, one Tory backbencher said, The trade deal she got last year with Japan during lockdown was, however, Im uh, impressive and it didn't it did make people sit up and take notice. Now she's on the brink of signing yet another one with Australia. The clever money these days is very much on Liz Truss taking over Boris. 
again, very interesting. But as you very well may know, the devil was in the detail with that Japan trade deal, and it overwhelmingly favoured Japan, while only about 17% actually favouring us. Again, it was not, by any stretch of the imagination, a good trade deal. And yes, the Australian deal. As was earlier with the trade deal secured by Liz Truss, there was the initial fanfare of hailing another victory for Global Britain. This one, however, there has been a significant backlash, reaching as far as the Cabinet, where the Trade Secretary is reportedly embroiled in now a furious row with George Eustace and the Environmental Secretary and also Michael Gove. The controversy over Truss's uh, deferation to grant tariff-free access to the UK market to Australian farmers as British farmers fear a sharp rise in cheaply produced Australian beef, lamb and sugar on British supermarket shelves, putting domestic producers under pressure. There were also warnings about animal welfare standards and environmental implications of sheep and beef farmers in parts of Scotland and Wales are thought to be the most at risk. Trust seems to be in absolutely no mood for compromise, though. To her, the deal, along with the one she signed off with Japan, will be the transformation that will give the UK members of the Comprehensive and Progressive Trans-Pacific Partnership that will give our exporters tariff-free access to 11 countries, which it is claimed will give us access to around 13% of global trade in goods. And as we've said before, just because we're part of that, doesn't actually mean a great deal because again it still costs money to send stuff to to those to those countries it's not the the advantages aren't very clearly there and at the moment there has been no impact assessment of how it will affect our economy and i highly suspect that it will be absolutely negligible so the problem is this is that as members of the EU, we shared a 15%, and this new arrangement will place us in direct competition with Australia and New Zealand exporters, who are now closer to those markets. Plus, it's a necessary to factor in the increased tensions with China. The row feels like a decisive moment in the assessing the sort of country post-Brexit Britain will become, but it's also a major test of Truss's political mettle and ambitions. Will she emerge strengthened or damaged, forced to bear the consequences of some of the very difficult questions that Brexit is posing for the country? She herself represents a farming constituency in the southwest of Norfolk, where in the last election she achieved 48% of the vote. But she seems to have an appeal that goes wider beyond that base. Like Johnson, she may not always be great on the detail, but for all that, she has that she also has the common touch. There's a lot of snobbery about Liz, but she knows how to talk in particular to disaffected Labour members. She adds, adds a helpful backbencher. She's not as polished or as well off as most of her cabinet colleagues, and yet they underestimate the, her at the peril. Truss's father was also a university professor at Leeds, and her mother worked as a nurse and, and as a teacher. And was a fully paid up member for the campaign of nuclear disarmament. The family were resolutely left wing and Liz was packed off to be uh, to the local comprehensive. Once she took part she also took part in the marching and shouting of Maggie 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 out 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 at the height of Margaret Thatcher's premiership. A scholarship to Oxford and jobs at Shell she was the commercial manager and cable and wireless and economics director and she shifted her politics sharply from Labour via the Lib Dems, to which she brief, briefly very belonged, to the libertarian conservative right. She's not a great speaker or a natural media star, which is why, in recent years, it's been her male rivals of the Tory high command that have been dispatched to the TV studios. They know only too well that if you Google the words car crash interview and trust, there is a lot to choose from. Her encounter with Eddie Marr in 2019 became the case in point. He asked her if she had herself experienced austerity and she said she hadn't, but then couldn't say in what way. He then asked her if she felt people could change their minds on the EU referendum and her position appeared to be that it was fine so long as they switched and, and as has she had, from remain to leave. She still grasped that, uh, she still however soon grasped than most 
how Twitter could be used as a political weapon, and Instagram too. And then, of course, there were her speeches and videos which were either seen as comedy gold or terrifyingly ill-informed. Her remarks at the 2014 conference about pork markets and British, British cheese inspired thousands of memes. And just before Christmas, parts of a speech she gave to how children in her class at school were left unable to read or write because too much time was taken up on learning about racism and sexism were discreetly taken down from the government website after a political opponents called it bonkers. As for skeletons, you've got to take your pick. In 2012, as the founder of the Free Enterprise Group, she put her name to the booklet entitled Britannia Unchained, which has become notorious because of the single sentence that asserts that the British are amongst the worst idlers in the world. Then there is the affair she had with Mark Field that began in 2005, when the Conservative campaign headquarters decided she needed a mentor, and when she was seeking a parliamentary seat, aligned upon the MPs for cities of London and Westminster. The relationship lasted for 18 months and precedented uh, the high-end fields of a 12 years marriage. Hers to Hugh O'Leary, a finance director for whom she had at least two children, survived and according to her became stronger. The Tories can be remarkably relaxed about adulterous men, but often adulterous, but not too often about adulterous women. And the new Tory uh, leader, David Cameron, was however unfazed and determined to try and modernise the party and ensure that more women became MPs and saw to it that Trust made it on to his controversial A-list of approved parliamentary candidates. In 2019, October, her plain speaking won over the local Tory Association of South West Norfolk, when her entanglement with Field went unmentioned. One old girl who brought it to attention of the committee said that it was uh, all worth of the Terence uh, Raglil's play, se uh, Separate Tables, and was, essen was essentially seen off. It was portrayed as a triumph of the Cameron modernisers against what one newspaper called the Turnip Taliban. Even though there were rumours at the Conservative HQ that had uh, conflicted about the whole row to make it look like Cameron had the Tory gold, old guard on the run. Truss mainly, uh, may routinely uh, be written off by her detractors as promoted beyond her abilities, but she is, for all that, the second longest surviving member of the cabinet of which she joined as environmental secretary back in July of 2014 a record only beaten by Michael Gove, appointed Education Secretary in May of 2010. The principal weapon in her armoury has and always will be her relentlessness. Some would be in no doubt say irrational cheeriness. Even in her no notorious interview with Eddie Marr, the presenter could not understand why she was grinning as she talked about austerity. It was almost in uh, in inevitable that in 2019, uh, she would complete uh, the, she would complete the throwing herself into the Tory leadership election without saying uh, such as times as when she might put herself forward. As no one else was going to, in that event, she chose not to. Her whole career has arguably been a triumph of, enthus of, of enthusiasm over experience, and many can be forgiving her for her failure. In March of 2017, when she was Lord Chancellor uh, to stick up for the judiciary, after the ruling in Gene Miller's favour that there should be a parliamentary debate on Article 50, the judge found themselves described by the Daily Mail as notorious on the front pages as enemies of the people. A junior minister, uh, Edward Falks, now chairman of the press regulator, Ipso, resigned from the department shortly after Truss arrived, expressing concern about her ability to stand up uh, to the executive on behalf of the judiciary. Others in department, included ministers and officials, were privately sceptical about her credentials, since her Oxford degree was in philosophy, politics and economics and not law. As for the details she has actually achieved, even before the latest Australia controversy, it's the details that make uh, concern many. Labour has accused her of making catastrophic blunders because manufacturers based in free ports look, uh, looks, looks as, as they stand as they will be effectively be able to access key markets on the deals that she has signed off on. No fewer than 23 countries the UK has signed agreements with will be affected because, say Labour, Trust has failed to remove the wide-ranging dual exemption prohibitions which state businesses are not allowed to have paid import duties or not permitted to benefit from reduced tariffs on exports. 
Even on the Vaunted Japan deal, there were many criticisms that appeared to be massively benefit the Japanese exporters when compared with the much lower increase to UK exports to Japan. Daniel, now Lord Hanan, is predictably giving trust covering fire, writing recently that many of those moaning about her deals are embittered remainers, Jacobites who can't let go. And then ever cheerful Truss has herself assured everyone that, Aus that her Australian deal will be great. There's talk of an imminent promotion for her in Johnson's cabinet. And her colleagues, including no doubt the Prime Minister himself, are, tr are treading around her weir very, very warily. Prime Minister uh, Truss is not uh, as sure beyond the bounds of possibility. But what would she actually do if she seized the crown? A passionate Labour supporter who metam metamorphosized now into a passionate Conservative. A Cameroon who now stands with Johnson's Praetorian Guard. A Remainer who became a Lever. Truss would ultimately seem to believe in nothing except perhaps herself. And I think that's really ultimately the best you could probably say about Liz Truss. Um, I do think ultimately there it's quite surprising that you know, conservative home put her suddenly in the running for these types of things. But again, it's not beyond the realms of possibility. And if Johnson does decide to go, um, a lot has been said about the fact that Johnson has been told to stay because of the pandemic. After the pandemic, and Johnson decides that he's had enough because we know he's not enjoying the job. Suddenly, as I've said, this this two horse race I said that would probably be between Michael Gove and uh, Rishi Sunak could become a three-horse race if Liz Truss decides to throw her hat into the ring. And potentially, all these deals that she's done and being praised for, even though when you look at them, they aren't very good, may damage her, they may not, they may endear her to her Conservative supporters. We don't know. So, as was said there, a Prime Minister Truss may not be certain, but it's something that we can't discount. So, as always, uh, thank you very much for watching. Uh, please do remember to uh, hit that like and share button on your way out. And, of course, down below there is a link to my Patreon page as well as a one-off donation link. And, as always, we'll see you all next time.